In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss production theory, and this is the first video of a three-part playlist. In this tutorial, I don't use any numbers or calculus. I just introduce you to the ideas of total product, marginal product, and average product, and their relationships. It turns out quantity produced is equal to some function of labor and capital. And in your textbooks, you'll see Q is equal to function, that little f means function, of L, and capital is denoted by K. So quantity is a function of labor and capital. And sometimes, since capital is fixed, that's what that little line over the top means, it's fixed, it's written as quantity is equal to quantity is equal to a function of labor. Along the x-axis, I'm going to graph units of labor, and that can be number of workers or hours. Along the y-axis or the vertical axis, I have units of output or quantity. As labor is added, I produce a quantity. L1 is my labor and Q1 is the quantity. If I add more labor, I produce more. Now L2 is my labor and Q2 is my quantity. But if I keep adding labor, a point comes in time where I'll actually produce less. So I have L3 and Q3. And you'll learn why that is in this video and the subsequent two videos. And this is the total product curve. The brown line is a total product curve. Again, holding capital fixed or constant. Now if I take that same unit of labor line, horizontal line, and I pull it down like that, that's units of labor. And on the y-axis, I have units of output per worker. Now I can plot average product. Now, average product is the amount of labor, in this case L1, divided into the amount of quantity is average product. In other words, quantity divided by labor is equal to average product. Your professor and your textbooks probably use the notation APL to represent average product of labor. I'll just use average product. Now if I pull labor straight down, then average product is Q1 divided by L1 at that point in time. Marginal product's a little different. Let me draw that curve in, the blue line is marginal product of labor. Let me add labor and quantity at point 1 and also labor and quantity at point 2, L2 and Q2. If I add some labor, how much does quantity go up or change? By the way, that little triangle, that little delta, means change in. So marginal product is the change in quantity divided by the change in labor, which is equal to Q2 minus Q1 divided by L2 minus L1. This is all equal to marginal product. Also, it may be written in your textbooks as MPL, which means marginal product of labor. So it looks something like this. You may recognize this as, hopefully, maybe you recognize it as, the rise, and this is the run. So we have rise over run. which is equal to the slope. So marginal product is equal to the slope of the total product curve. 
at any particular point. In this case, we let the change in labor be very small. In fact, the change in labor is one labor unit. So in essence, we want to know is, if labor goes up one unit, how much does quantity produced change? It's a slope of the total product curve. Marginal product of labor is a slope of the total product curve. A tangent line at any point on that total product curve is the slope or the rate of change. And that's also marginal productivity of labor at every point. And some points are more interesting than others. For example, this is where marginal productivity of labor is zero. And then it goes negative. If I draw a tangent line and just touch the total product curve like that, and I draw a straight line down, what that shows me is at that point, average product is equal to marginal product. Another point of interest is when that tangent line is flat and that means the rate of change is zero or the slope is zero. So it crosses the horizontal axis right at the zero point there. That value there is zero. And anything beyond this point, the slope is negative. So now I have three distinct regions or stages. I have stage one, which is the first part there, stage two and stage three. Stage one is increasing average product. Where marginal product is greater than average product. Stage two is decreasing average product, but I still have a positive marginal product. Stage three is a decreasing total product and a negative marginal product. And with negative marginal product, total product is actually falling. Adding more labor causes total product to fall. One last idea is diminishing marginal returns, and that's from that point forward where marginal product of labor, the slope is actually negative or decreasing. Again, total product is, actually, I should say quantity is a function of labor and capital, where I have fixed capital, and so it is, quantity is a function of labor. Often in your textbooks, you'll see this labeled as TP, or total product, TPL, actually. You'll see AP representing average product, APL, and MPL representing marginal product of labor. Up next, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'll use numbers. And I'll talk about total product, average product, and marginal product of labor, and I'll use numbers.